investigation of Again, Patrick thanks for Chambers. Us, uh, on such quick notice, everybody, appreciate that. And now we will listen. Uh, we will in. now turn it over to Vice President for Intercollegiate Athletics, Sandy Barber, for an opening statement. Thank you, Chris. Uh, appreciate everybody uh, joining on, on such notice, as, as Chris said. Uh, certainly, this has been a, a difficult day. Uh, I am announcing uh, that I have accepted the resignation of men's basketball head coach Pat Chambers following an internal investigation of allegations of inappropriate conduct, which surfaced shortly after ESPN published a July 6th story on the website, The Undefeated. Uh, the review was conducted jointly by our Penn State Affirmative Action and Athletics Integrity Offices. We do not uh, disclose the details of personnel investigations, but I can tell you, as difficult as this news may be, both President Barron and I believe that this is the right outcome. Coach Chambers has made many contributions uh, to the program and to this university, for which we are grateful. Uh, the team has been on a positive trajectory and has responded well to Coach Chambers' efforts on and off the court. But as difficult as this news may be, we think it's best in the best interest of Penn State, our program, and our student athletes. Our main focus at this moment is squarely on them, our student athletes and our men's basketball program, which as you have heard me say many times, they are our uh, they are our focus. This was difficult. They have been the authors of the rebirth of Penn State men's basketball. And although I am sure it will take them a little time, I am certain that they will find their footing and move confidently and successfully through the academic year, through COVID-19. And I look forward to supporting their success. We have appointed assistant coach Jim Ferris, basketball coach, and he will serve in that placement can be named. Coach Ferry has spent nearly 20 years as a collegiate head coach at four different institutions, and I am confident that he and our talented staff will provide strong and focused and determined leadership and guidance for our young men. So let me repeat, uh, I, we will not and do not disclose details of personnel matters, uh, but I am happy to take uh, a few questions uh, and answer as I am able to. As Sandy indicated, she will take a couple of questions now. Uh, Nate Bauer, Blue It Illustrated. Sandy. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. You're there, Nate. Go ahead, Nate. Okay, we're good. Um, if you could help clarify the timeline uh, a little bit, when was the investigation, uh, the internal investigation completed? Um, not necessarily the details, but when, when did it finish versus uh, this transpiring today? Uh, and also, will will Coach Ferry be considered um, for the head coaching position? Yes, we we received uh, Dr. Barron and I received the report. Uh, I would say in the last uh, uh, inside the last two weeks, uh, and uh, Coach Ferry uh, certainly will will do a, a national search. Uh, that's what we'll always do for head coaches here at Penn State. Um, but uh, I would would love to see Coach Ferry have the kind of success, have our our program have the kind of success this season um, that would give Coach Ferry a shot. Uh, Sandy, ben, ben Jones, statecollege.com. Sandy, uh, I don't want to. We're having some audio issues. Go ahead, Ben. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sandy, I don't want to get into the things you don't necessarily want to talk about, but was this investigation solely a product of that story? Were there things, enough things that came out after the fact that, that led you to believe that? And is this the sort of thing that it's all in the same area, or are there other things that came up that led to this decision? Yeah, the allegation was uh, was previously unknown uh, to Penn State and uh, and was uh, independent, unrelated uh, to the undefeated article. Dave Jones, Penn Live. Sandy, um, 
I've been told there were questions about recruiting irregularities. Can you confirm that during the, the uh, investigation by Bob Boland? We don't, uh, we're not going to get into to the details of this, but uh, uh, NCA matters were not part of this. Sorry, I'm looking for you, Mark Brennan, and I'm not finding you. There you are. Mark Brennan, fight on, or, uh, fight on state. Hey, Sandy, thank you for doing this today. Uh, can you tell us how, when the players learned about this? Uh, how did you break the news to them? What was their reaction? Yeah, the, the, uh, our student athletes uh, found out about 4.30 today, and uh, Coach Chambers is the one that delivered the news uh, to them. Um, and as you can imagine, um, it was uh, difficult news uh, for them to hear. You know, Coach Chambers uh, has, uh, has many, um, uh, well, current and, and former uh, players that uh, have been glowing in their, their praise of, of him. And, uh, you know, our current players have, uh, uh, many of them have very good relationships uh, with him. And, and he is the one that has given them this opportunity. Uh, and so they are, uh, uh, they're in a little bit of shock. And, uh, and, uh, and they're, they're very disappointed. Our last question, we'll go to Dana O'Neill, The Athletic. Sandy, obviously there's a lot going on these days with, you know, coach behavior and people want to try to, I don't know, minimize, maximize what is tolerable, what is not intolerable, is not tolerable these days. How do you draw the line? I'm not asking you to go into specifics of what, what was the pushover here, but how do you kind of walk that fine line when some people say it's just making a kid tough, it's just, make, you know, coaching them hard? Yeah, that's a great question, Dana, and and that obviously is uh, is something that uh, coaches in general uh, nowadays, uh, you know, really do uh, walk walk a fine line. Um, and it's obviously my job as as athletic director to evaluate that. And it's uh, you know, there's uh, behavior that um, uh, you you know represents your values, and there's behavior that that you don't. And I, I'm speaking very generally, uh, and that. That's typically uh, what, what I lean on from a values perspective. That's all the time we have for Sandy Barber today. Thank you very much, Sandy. Thanks for joining very quickly, everybody. We will make this uh, recording available and send it out on our uh, email list. Thank you. So again, at the story from State College, you heard from AD Sandy Barber, a hastily called news conference there, again, to reveal what the school had said on its website. Patrick Chambers stepping down after nine seasons, won the NIT, never did take a team to the NCAA tournament, although this team from this past year certainly would have ended that drought. They won 20 games twice in the last three seasons, really had them on an upward trajectory, winning 11 conference games, their most in more than two decades. Uh, Mike DeCourcy is joining us now. You, of course, know Mike from his work here on BTN as well as at the Sporting News. And Mike, really appreciate you joining us on such short notice. First of all, just your reaction to this news that an hour ago would have seemed like an absolute shock, and, and yet here it is sinking in. What, what do you make of it all? Well, something rather stunning. We had read the story about his interaction a year ago with Rashir Bolton, and honestly, it sort of had forgotten about it. It was it was obviously not a pleasant story at the time, but one didn't know that it went any farther than his initial response to that. And obviously, Penn State took it very seriously. They they've taken the action that they have. It comes at a very difficult time, without a doubt, for the players who are in the program now. There are some very fine basketball players at Penn State now that are a week into, into full-time practice that now have to make an adjustment to a completely different coach. And as, as you know, Dave, uh, this, is not a, this is not going to be an easy year 
to compete in the Big Ten Conference. It's not going to be an easy year for anybody, given the circumstances they're playing through. But it's really going to be a challenging season once we get into Big Ten play for everybody that's trying to win basketball games. And I think Jim Ferry is a fine basketball coach. Uh, he, he, he can do some things differently than what Patrick did during his time there that might sit, suit this team. But it would have been great for the Nittany Lions if maybe they'd been able to come to this decision sooner. Yeah, give us a sense for Jim Ferry, for people who might not know him. He is well-traveled, certainly very well-known in basketball circles, kind of in the inner circle of college basketball and very well-respected. But for those who might not know his name because he hasn't really been a high major head coach, give us a sense of who he is. He spent a lot of time as the head coach at Long Island University and did a very fine job. It took a while to build the program to great success, but his last two seasons, they were conference regular season champions. And his last season at LIU, they were a very dynamic offensive team. They were number two in the nation in 2011-12 in scoring. And when, when and he also then went to Duquesne from that. He used that as a launching pad to Duquesne. Duquesne's a very difficult job. Uh, they're having success now, uh, but it, it had been a very long time uh, before they were able to get to success. They really struggled for about three decades, and Jim wasn't able to turn it. When they hired him at Penn State, when Patrick hired him, I really thought that Jim would be given more control of the offense than he was. I thought he would be able to inject some life into the offense that hadn't been there. And gradually, as the, as the personnel increased, especially to this past season, when they were so dynamic at guard with players like Isaiah Brockington and Miles Tread, as well as having Lamar Stevens up front, they were able to be better offensively than they had been. But I, I think that he'll, he'll, his offensive abilities, his, his, his desire to push the pace of the game, I think suits the players that they have in place now. Uh, they don't have the kind of size and, and versatility in the front court they had with Lamar Stevens uh, and obviously Michael Watkins. But the guard play that they have, I think, I think at the very least, he'll, he'll give them a fighting chance once he's able to get them going in the direction and understanding that he's the man in charge. Things clearly did not end the way that Patrick Chambers or anyone associated with Penn State, frankly, would have wanted them to end. But can you put the Chambers era into some sort of perspective for us? I think that if you look at the, the core of the Big Ten, the, 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 the group of, of 11 that have been in the league uh, for basically the past 40 years, uh, 30 years, I should say, uh, at the, Penn State basketball has always been the most difficult job in that, in that particular, in men's basketball. It's been the most difficult of the Big Ten jobs to succeed. And I don't think there's any question that he made it better, uh, that he brought in some players who were outstanding. Uh, I mentioned several of them, Lamar Stevens, obviously the best of them. Uh, and they were able to become more competitive in the Big Ten. Very unfortunate, Patrick or not, uh, uh, very unfortunate this past year's team didn't get the chance to play in the NCAA tournament and end that streak of not having made it. Uh, and, and maybe get a chance to take their shot at winning some games. Uh, but he did change the, the, the nature of the program to, to a more successful, uh, a more desirable program. They had some very nice crowds. They did the wonderful things. That you, you and Steve down in, uh, in, Pens in, in, in Philadelphia at the Palestra, moving some games there, I think was very, a very good move for them and something that they're going to want to return to in the future. So he has improved the, the sport of men's basketball at Penn State. A very disappointing end and, and obviously a very unfortunate choice of words uh, in that interaction with Rashir Bolton from the 2018-19 season. I, I think it, what, it, what it does, it leaves a warning to all coaches that they need to choose their words carefully when they are interacting with their players, that there are certain terminologies now that are completely out of bounds. Perhaps they always should have been, but you need to, you need as a coach to be someone that's on top of the language that you choose to use. Just as you and I have to uh, be certain of what we say on television, I think the coaches need to go into a practice understanding that as much as it's an enclosed environment and there are very few observers, if not in some cases, none, 
I, it's still that 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 idea that what you say is is not going to simply stay in the practice. It has to be it, you, you have to be firm uh, and direct and sometimes punitive, but you can't be uh, you can't use racial terminology. You can't use uh, the, 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 the old fashioned terminology demeaning to women that people have used. You have to be very careful about how you go about disciplining your players. And if you don't, I think we've seen with with this circumstance and with many others that there can be consequences. Well said, Mike Corsi of BTN and the Sporting News. Thanks so much, Mike, on very short notice. Really appreciate you coming on with us and, of course, adding your great perspective. Thanks, Dave. Now, plenty more to come. We will continue our coverage. Again, Patrick Chambers stepping down from BTN analyst Stephen Bardo. That is next as we continue BTN Live. Back on BTN Live, again, breaking news out of State College. Patrick Chambers stepping down after nine years as the head coach of the Penn State basketball program, finishing two games under 500 in his tenure there. We heard from Athletic Director Sandy Barber a little earlier here on BTN. She said that this was the result of an internal investigation into Chambers' treatment of players. This after a player, Rashir Bolton, who played for Patrick Chambers said that Chambers had said he was playing as if he had a noose around his neck. That on ESPN.com's The Undefeated, that story broke over the summer. Stephen Bardo, BTN analyst, is with us. And Stephen, first of all, your reaction. I mean, this is a story that we talked quite a bit about over the summer. And then, you know, Mike DeCourcy was kind of saying he hadn't heard too much about it. Felt like maybe it had been resolved internally at Penn State. What do you think when you hear this news today? Well, I think it's unfortunate uh, because the situation causes a young man to come out and, you know, really expose a story nationally that typically you find that stays within the clubhouse or the locker room. So uh, it's an unfortunate situation. It happened. 
the facts are out, the, the inv investigation was done, and they chose to part ways. And it's unfortunate, Dave, because, you know, we get to know these coaches working at Big Ten Network, and we get to know uh, their families. You and I went to Philadelphia and did that game, and we got to meet some of his large family in Philly and the special connection there. So it's – I understand uh, that they needed to make this decision, but it's kind of – bittersweet because uh, Chambers, I think, was building something at Penn State. Well, certainly had an ex extremely successful team this year. And I think now the question becomes, Stephen, how do they keep that momentum going? How big a challenge is it for Penn State to continue to succeed in basketball? Mike was outlining what a challenging job this can be. Yeah, it is challenging, Dave, but, you know, they do have – a pipeline now that was established with coach chambers into Philadelphia. And that's a talent rich area that if they can continue to uh, keep those relationships in good standard, I think that they can continue to build, um, you know, Pat chambers went into areas that Penn state didn't get players previously. And if, if coach Ferry is the choice, because Sandy Barber mentioned, you know, it was mentioned that he would be a part of the national search for this position. you got to know that the timing of what's going on is going to favor Coach Ferry in this scenario based on the season starting November 25th. So it would be interesting to see what how this plays out. But um, if there is a bit of continuity from his uh, regime, I think it would benefit Penn State moving forward, at least for this season. Put yourself in the position of a player, Stephen, a player who was recruited by Patrick Chambers. And now here you are, you're a week in to practice, essentially, and your coach is leaving. How tough is that in terms of keeping this team on the rails? Oh, it's very tough because you make a decision uh, largely based on the head coach, not solely, hopefully, on the head coach, but largely this is the uh, – a guy that's going to be sort of a father figure for you once you leave home. You know, this is the, uh, you know, the next step up in this progression that a lot of young men want to be, and they want to be professional players. And this is the next step on that. And, you know, when you look at the situation, it's like, it, it's, it's incumbent on who is going to be in charge because do you fit into what this system is going to be? And that's, it's all up in the air right now. I feel for those players, but I, I do want to stress that they are in a great situation because they are at Penn State University. And I'm not sure that um, whoever comes in, that that's a talented enough roster that they can do something with that. Stephen, I, I don't, we don't pretend to know what happened in this investigation. We certainly know the quote that Rashir Bolton shared, and you can certainly understand why that would be incredibly offensive to that young man. Uh, and so I, I don't want to put you in a position to speculate or anything like that, but I, I guess I'm asking you more broadly, kind of what does this tell us about college athletics, about the relationship between coaches and players, about uh, you know the situation surrounding race on college campuses right now? Kind of, again, it's such a broad topic, but is there anything that you read into this which changes your point of view in any way today or makes you think in a different way than you might have thought an hour ago? Very well put, Dave. That's a great question. And, you know, I don't normally do this, but I'm willing to bet my relationship that Pat Chambers meant nothing malicious, prejudice, or anything by that statement. I understand how Rashir Bolton took it. I, I get it. I understand it. But I would... I don't think that Pat Chambers would say that in the nature that it's being portrayed. And so, it's an, again, it's an unfortunate situation. There needs to be education on both sides from the player standpoint, because it can't it can't always be about, you know, being new, being hip, being woke. It can't always be about that because everybody doesn't start from that position. And so there needs to be some education on both sides to bring both parties together, in my opinion, meaning coaches and players. I mean, we've, you know, there's some situations going on in another conference with another program with a coach and supposedly about his behavior. And there really needs to be a lot of education, in my opinion, on both sides. 
Uh, interesting take. Interesting you would say that, and I, I certainly know, you know, there are a lot of people who have an affinity for Patrick Chambers. On the other hand, you certainly understand Rashir Bolton's point of view. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. it doesn't get much more offensive in terms of imagery than a noose, right? Yeah, it, it, it is, Dave, but, you know, the thing of it is, it, these are personal situations, right? And we're talking about something that's been systemic in our society for quite a while. And everybody's going to experience those encounters differently. And so I, I think that what we need to look at more so than the act, we need to try to look at the intent. If we can try to look at the, the behavior of this person throughout the tenure at Penn State, you're talking about Pat Chambers has been there for nine years. He went and got DJ Newbill, um, Tim Frazier, Shep Garner. Josh Reeves, Mike Watkins. He might have saved Michael Watkins' life, seriously, based on the encounters that Michael Watkins had with police authorities and his own battle with depression. Pat Chambers might have saved this young man's life. And so we have to take those, in, we have to take his body of work into consideration if we're going to, you know, use this broad stroke of prejudice or social injustice over this one situation, because it, to my knowledge, it was one situation, but there's a lot of interaction between players and coaches in a season that it, if it all boils down to one situation, that, that's, that's tough for me being a, an ex-player. Yeah, and again, I think maybe we'll find out a little bit more as we learn some details and, and begin to understand whether or not it, again, was an isolated incident, was there more to it. Pat Chambers certainly apologized uh, for the, the comments that he made. But again, the, the comments are out there. Uh, Stephen Bardo, really appreciate your time. Really appreciate your insight. I know it's a very short notice today, but thanks so much for, for shedding some light on this situation. Anytime with you, Dave. Appreciate right. it. Good to talk to you, my friend. Looking forward to getting some hoops going here in the not too distant future. Uh, as we continue here, our live coverage on BTN, we'll get some thoughts from Andy Katz, he will join us next. Again, Patrick Chambers stepping down at Penn State.
today on BTN. Patrick Chambers stepping down as the head basketball coach at Penn State, releasing a statement saying, quote, today I'm announcing my departure from Penn State. I'm so proud of all of our program has accomplished these past nine years, and I'll always be grateful to the Penn State community for its ongoing support. Anyone who's ever coached, especially at this level, knows the exceptional amount of energy and focus it takes to deliver each and every day. This has been an incredibly difficult year for me and my family, and we are in need of a break to reset and chart our path forward. Chambers concluding, so I'm taking a step back to prepare myself for the next 20 years. I remain deeply committed to helping student athletes reach their full potential on and off the court, and I look forward to giving my all for them in my next role. Here's Penn State Athletic Director Sandy Barber addressing the media a little bit earlier. Thank you, Chris. Uh, appreciate everybody uh, joining on, on such notice, as, as Chris said. Uh, certainly, this has been a, a difficult day. Uh, I am announcing uh, that I have accepted the resignation of men's basketball head coach Pat Chambers following an internal investigation of allegations of inappropriate conduct, which surfaced shortly after ESPN published a July 6th story on the website, The Undefeated. Uh, the review was conducted jointly by our Penn State Affirmative Action and Athletics Integrity Offices. We do not uh, disclose the details of personnel investigations, but I can tell you, as difficult as this news may be, both President Barron and I believe that this is the right outcome. Coach Chambers has made many contributions uh, to the program and to this university, for which we are grateful. Uh, the team has been on a positive trajectory and has responded well to Coach Chambers' efforts on and off the court. But as difficult as this news may be, we think it's best in the best interest of Penn State, our program, and our student athletes. Our main focus at this moment is squarely on them, our student athletes and our men's basketball program, which as you have heard me say many times, they are our why, they are our purpose. Uh, they are our focus. This was difficult and unexpected news for them, and we are committed to continuing to provide them with the necessary resources as they focus on their academics, health and safety, and preparation for the season to come. The young men in our program are talented, passionate, and resilient. They have been the authors of the rebirth of Penn State men's basketball. And although I am sure it will take them a little time, I am certain that they will find their footing and move confidently and successfully through the academic year, through COVID-19 and through the COVID-19 environment and the competitive season. And I look forward to supporting their success. We have appointed assistant coach Jim Ferry as the interim men's basketball coach, and he will serve in that role until a permanent replacement can be named. Coach Ferry has spent nearly 20 years as a collegiate head coach at four different institutions, and I am confident that he and our talented staff will provide strong and focused and determined leadership and guidance for our young men. So let me repeat, uh, I, we will not and do not disclose details of personnel matters, uh, but I am happy to take uh, a few questions uh, and answer as I am able to. As Sandy indicated, she will take a couple of questions now. Uh, Nate Bauer, Blue It Illustrated. Sandy. Uh-oh. Nope. You're there, Nate. Go ahead, Nate. Okay, we're good. Um, if you could help clarify the timeline uh, a little bit, when was the investigation, uh, the internal investigation completed? Um, not necessarily the details, but when, when did it finish versus uh, this transpiring today? Uh, and also, will will Coach Ferry be considered um, for the head coaching position? Yes, we we received uh, Dr. Barron and I received the report. Uh, I would say in the last uh, uh, inside the last two weeks, uh, and uh, Coach Ferry uh, certainly will will do a, a national search. Uh, that's what we'll always do for head coaches here at Penn State. Um, but uh, I would would love to see Coach Ferry have the kind of success, have our our program have the kind of success this season um, that would give Coach Ferry a shot. Thank you. 
San Diego. Ben, ben Jones, statecollege.com. San Diego, uh, I don't want to. We're having some audio issues. Go ahead, Ben. All right. Uh, Sandy, I don't want to get into the things you don't necessarily want to talk about, but was this investigation solely a product of that story? Were there things, enough things that came out after the fact that, that led you to believe that? And is this the sort of thing that it's all in the same area, or are there other things that came up that led to this decision? Yeah, the allegation was uh, was previously unknown uh, to Penn State and, uh, and was uh, independent, unrelated uh, to the undefeated article. Dave Jones, Penn Live. Sandy, um, I've been told there were questions about rec recruiting irregularities. Can you confirm that during the, the uh, investigation by Bob Boland? We don't, uh, we're not going to get into to the details of this, but uh, uh, NCA matters were not part of this. Sorry, I'm looking for you, Mark Brennan, and I'm not finding you. There you are. Mark Brennan, Fight on, or, uh, Fight on State. Hey, Sandy, thank you for doing this today. Uh, can you tell us how, when the players learned about this? Uh, how did you break the news to them? What was their reaction? Yeah, the, the, uh, our student athletes uh, found out about 4.30 today, and uh, Coach Chambers is the one that delivered the news uh, to them. Um, and as you can imagine, um, it was uh, difficult news uh, for them to hear. You know, Coach Chambers uh, has, uh, has many, um, uh, well, current and, and former uh, players that uh, have been glowing in their, their praise of, of him. And, uh, you know, our current players have, uh, uh, many of them have very good relationships uh, with him. And, and he is the one that has given them this opportunity. Uh, and so they are, uh, uh, they're in a little bit of shock. And, uh, and, uh, and they're, they're very disappointed. Our last question, we'll go to Dana O'Neill, The Athletic. Sandy, obviously there's a lot going on these days with you know, coach behavior and people want to try to, I don't know, minimize, maximize what is tolerable, what is not, intoler is not tolerable these days. How do you draw the line? I'm not asking you to go into specifics of what, what was the pushover here, but how do you kind of walk that fine line when some people say it's just making a kid tough? It's just make, you know, coaching them hard. Yeah, that's a great question, Dana, and and that obviously is uh, is something that uh, coaches in general uh, nowadays, uh, you know, really do uh, walk walk a fine line. Um, and it's obviously my job as as athletic director to evaluate that. And it's uh, you know, there's uh, behavior that um, uh, you you know represents your values, and there's behavior that that you don't. And I, I'm speaking very generally, uh, and that. That's typically uh, what, what I lean on from a values perspective. That's all the time we have for Sandy Barber today. Thank you very much, Sandy. Thanks for joining very quickly, everybody. We will make this uh, recording available and send it out. So that's the entirety of what we heard from Sandy Barber earlier today. Very happy to have Andy Katz, BTN contributor, joining us now. And Andy, first of all, just overall your reaction to the news of Patrick Chambers stepping down. Well, it's disappointing. Um, obviously, uh, Patrick, you know, had done a, a really solid job of elevating this program uh, from 2011 to last season when we fully expected they would have been in the NCAA tournament, led by Lamar Stevens, uh, who really had been a dedicated player for Penn State. Uh, but as you just heard, I think that last question from Dan O'Neill in The Athletic, uh, that there's a larger issue here, Dave, and the story that came out in the undefeated with receiver Bolton who went from Penn state to Iowa state and the reference uh, to a noose around his neck and loosening it uh, using that phrasing that Pat Chambers did during a practice to Bolton and how Bolton was offended by that. And that was one of the catalysts for sending him off out of Penn state on his own volition to Iowa state. You know, we're in a new era and coaches uh, of all, Sizes all, you know, every every level of Division One, two and three, I should say, and all levels of, of uh, coaching, high school on up. Um, you know, what you say matters. Words matter, and you cannot be demeaning ever. You can't touch any player ever. 
you can be demanding, but there is a line. And that line was crossed by Pat Chambers, clearly forcing an investigation. Uh, we may learn later as to what else was found during that investigation, uh, but it was enough there to warrant a change during an unprecedented time in all our lives, especially in college athletics, to make a change at this moment meant that everything he had done through the investigation, which was corroborated, uh, there was no turning back and he had to go. I mean, they allowed him to resign, but clearly he was going to go. Yeah, it's interesting too. And, you know, there was an incident, of course, with Miles Dredd pushing Miles Dredd uh, during a timeout in a game two seasons ago. So there was that as well. But it does kind of speak, I think what you're talking about is kind of some larger issues going on, larger issues going on in our society and larger issues going on in kind of this relationship between coaches and players. And, and I mean, while it is in the micro about Patrick Chambers and certainly to him and this team, that micro really matters. There's kind of a macro issue. And I think that's what you're getting at here, Andy, that, that everything is now taken in the context of, of what's going on in society. Yeah, I mean, look, there's a case going on at Wichita State right now with Greg Marshall. Uh, he's under investigation for the way he treated his players, both at Winthrop and Wichita State. But they're waiting for, like Penn State, a third-party investigation to corroborate the information. Clearly, in this case, it was corroborated enough to warrant a resignation. Maybe it was ultimately going to be a dismissal. And that allows him probably some wiggle room within his contract uh, if there's cause. But I also think there's a larger issue David, that, that we're going to see throughout college athletics is there is much more power to the player. They have been empowered. We are seeing that now through not just COVID, but even more so through all the social injustice that has gone on and the awakening, I should say, for a lot of mainstream America to see what's really going on in terms of systemic racism. And players have been empowered to speak their mind, regardless of what they're going to say, without any retribution from their either peers or coaches or administrators. And I think this is now where administrators, any kind of allegation by a player, especially if it involves any kind of demeaning, uh, any racist uh, language, anything related to gender, um, you know, sexual uh, orientation, um, any of that, um, you know, it, it's really going to have an effect where there's going to be a formal investigation because those players are going to be believed. Maybe they should have been believed before, but I think now more than ever, what they say will matter and administrators cannot look the other way at all. And I think this was a great example of what we're going to see at this point forward for anyone that crosses that line. We spoke with Mike Corsi a little bit about Jim Ferry, who now takes over in very challenging circumstances. He was talking about his time and his success in LIU, had the Duquesne head coaching position uh, previous to his time, uh, more recently to uh, to his time at, at Penn State. And obviously, as, as Mike said, look, that is a, a really challenging job. But give us a sense for kind of what Jim Ferry's walking into here. Well, first of all, I think it's absolutely imperative that they hired an interim coach who has been a head coach. Because as you know, Dave, in football, as we get ready for the Big Ten to start up, and then, of course, in men's and women's basketball, the two other high-profile sports in the winter, um, you need experience as a head coach and the players because you could be dealing with unprecedented decisions. You could have, you know, being sidelined for 7 to 14 days. You could have games being missed. You could have to practice with limited numbers. There's so many different things that be, could be coming at a head coach and a team. And so you're going to need a head coach – that has dealt with adversity, that knows how to run a program. And so in that sense, Penn State is very fortunate that they have someone like Jim Ferry on the bench because I can't even imagine how you could just go out and hire someone who's not on campus during this pandemic uh, or, or if he had a staff without someone that had even managed a staff before. Uh, whether or not he can get the full-time job, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I'd be surprised if they didn't really try to make a diverse hire here, uh, but we'll wait and see. I mean, maybe they'll have a great season. They've got eight returning players. Uh, they certainly have postseason potential, uh, but losing, obviously, Lamar Stevens was a big blow, but their backcourt is back, so they have potential, but I think having Jim Ferry having experience uh, is monumental at this time. 
Yeah, there is certainly some talent. Um, you know, Myron Jones uh, coming back, obviously. Isaiah Brockington, uh, some really good players there at Penn State. We saw Seth Lundy start to emerge last year, a really talented young guy. If it isn't Jim Ferry, what are the particular you know, kind of challenges that, that this program presents and what's kind of the mold of the person who you think could succeed here along the way that Pat Chambers was starting to succeed here at the end of his tenure? Well, look, I mean, the hire made sense. Uh, you've got a Villanova assistant. I know he was the head coach at BU, but obviously a former Villanova assistant. I mean, Penn State really needed to, and I know they've tried so many different ways to to recruit, but tapping into Philadelphia as best they can, you're not going to beat Villanova, uh, but if you can get the second best player in Philly, I mean, that would still be great when there's obviously in an area where there usually is talent. Um, So to look east, you know, for them is the right move. Uh, And so I think that was the right mindset for them. I mean, playing the game that you broadcasted, I think it was last year, my mind's blur, but uh, the Iowa game at the Palestra. Yes, last year. It seemed like five years ago, but I mean, doing (laughs) stuff like that and trying to get into, you know, the Philadelphia market as much as possible where, where so much of their alumni base is and obviously in the New York metro area. And Penn State loves to play games in, in either the Garden or the Barclays, all that. You know, I think they still have to head in that direction for a coach that's got those ties to bring those kind of players to Penn State. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, look, Pat Chambers had a very clear blueprint for how he wanted to do this. And Philadelphia was the main part of that blueprint and did an incredible job recruiting that city. Uh, Andy Katz, thanks so much for your time on very short notice here. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Dave. Uh, We were talking about the talent that is returning to Penn State. I mentioned some of these names. When you look at this backcourt, really talented. Jamari Wheeler, of course, a real spark plug for them. So, again, no Lamar Stevens, no Mike Watkins. Understandably, I think most people thought Penn State might take a bit of a step back, but, but there is some talent, no doubt, in State College. Again... The breaking news, Pat Chambers out after nine seasons at Penn State. Thanks so much for joining us here. Our special coverage on BTN. Tessa is getting her holiday shopping done early at Amazon. So come December, she'll get to be holiday time. 